Beijing just opened the world's first robot shopping mall, and within 16 days, they sold 190,000 robots and generated $46 million in revenue. Meanwhile, Illinois banned AI therapy chatbots because people were literally marrying their AI therapists and ending up in hospitals. Welcome to 2025, where the line between helpful technology and concerning dependency has never been blurrier. I've been tracking the AI and robotic space for years, but what's happening right now feels like we've hit some kind of acceleration point. Robot dogs are delivering your Chipotle order, police are testing weapon-detecting robot dogs, and YouTube is secretly making your videos look more AI-enhanced without telling anyone. Let me break down the most significant developments that are reshaping how AI and robotics integrate into our daily lives and why some governments are starting to pump the brakes. Let's start with that jaw-dropping Beijing robot mall statistic. A 4,000 square meter shopping center dedicated entirely to robots, and they moved nearly 200,000 units in just over two weeks. That's not just impressive sales numbers, that's a glimpse into a completely different relationship with robotics. China now produces over half of all robotics products globally and has had the largest robot stock since 2016. But what really caught my attention is the pricing strategy. Chinese robotics firm AGI Bot is selling humanoid robots for $27,000, robot dogs for $5,000, and robotic hands for $2,000. Now, $27,000 for a humanoid robot still sounds expensive, but compare that to what Boston Dynamics was charging just a few years ago. We're talking about price points that put these technologies within the reach of small businesses and affluent consumers, not just Fortune 500 companies. This aggressive pricing strategy aligns with China's Made in China 2025 program, which aims for global leadership in industrial robotics. And honestly, looking at these numbers, they're not just aiming for leadership, they're achieving it. But not everyone is embracing this AI integration. Illinois just banned AI-powered therapy chatbots unless they're supervised by licensed clinicians, and the reasons are genuinely concerning. The state cited cases of people losing touch with reality, marrying AI characters, and requiring hospitalization due to excessive reliance on AI companions. Utah has similar bans, and California is considering them. Now, I have mixed feelings about this. On one hand, AI therapy can provide 24-7 support for people who might not otherwise have access to mental health services. On the other hand, when people start forming romantic relationships with chatbots and can't distinguish between AI responses and human interaction, we clearly have a problem. The $10,000 fines for violations show how seriously Illinois is taking this. But I wonder if banning is the right approach, or if we need better education about AI limitations instead. Speaking of AI capabilities, NVIDIA just released Jetson Thor, and the specifications are staggering. This robotic computer offers 7.5 times more AI processing power than the previous generation, allowing robots to think and react in real time while processing data from multiple sensors simultaneously. Companies like Agility Robotics, Boston Dynamics, and research labs at Stanford and Carnegie Mellon are already integrating Jetson Thor. With over 2 million developers using NVIDIA's robotic platform, we're seeing robots become genuinely intelligent, rather than just following pre-programmed routines. The developer kit starts at $3,500, dropping to $2,999 for bulk purchases over 1,000 units. That price point makes advanced robotics accessible to universities, startups, and medium-sized companies that couldn't afford this technology before. What excites me most is the real-time processing capability. Previous generations of robotic computers had noticeable delays between sensing and responding. Jetson Thor eliminates that lag, bringing robots much closer to human-like reaction times. Now here's something that sounds like science fiction, but is available right now, Dynamic Labs Mirage 2. This AI model generates fully interactive, playable video game worlds from simple inputs like images or text prompts running in real time in your web browser. 
You can upload a child's drawing and turn it into a playable game world, feed it Van Gogh's Starry Night and explore that artistic landscape as an interactive environment. Create a Ghibli-style village that you can actually walk through and interact with. Unlike Google's Genie 3, which isn't publicly available, Mirage 2 is immediately accessible. This democratizes game creation in ways we've never seen before. Traditionally, creating game worlds requires large teams and years of development. Now, anyone with an idea can prototype interactive experiences instantly. The implications extend beyond gaming. This technology could revolutionize virtual training environments, architectural visualization, and educational simulations. We're talking about the ability to create immersive interactive experiences from imagination alone. Speaking of mysterious developments, Elon Musk recently tweeted about a new company called Macro Hard, clearly a play on Microsoft, and announced they're seeking new brains. Based on Musk's previous statements about software companies that don't produce physical hardware, this appears to be focused on AI-simulated software. His reasoning is that if companies like Microsoft create purely digital products, those products should be fully simulable with AI. Now, I'm naturally skeptical of Elon's announcements because he has a history of promising things that don't materialize on schedule. But the timing is interesting, especially with OpenAI collaborating with former Apple designer Johnny Ive on AI-powered hardware. If Musk is serious about competing with Microsoft through AI-simulated software, this could represent a fundamental shift in how we think about operating systems and productivity software. But until we see actual products, it's mostly speculation. Here's something that directly affects millions of creators. YouTube has been secretly using AI to enhance video quality without notifying uploaders. Videos are being made sharper, smoother, with better contrast and improved skin tones, all through machine learning algorithms. YouTube claims this is traditional machine learning, not generative AI, but creators are noticing their videos look more AI enhanced than they intended. The concern is that YouTube might be normalizing an AI aesthetic that changes the authentic feel of user-generated content. This raises important questions about platform autonomy versus creator control. Should platforms be able to alter content without explicit permission, even if the changes are technically improvements? Where's the line between enhancement and manipulation? I find this particularly concerning because viewers might not realize they're seeing AI-modified content, which could affect their expectations for non-enhanced videos. Robot dogs are having their moment. Chipotle is testing autonomous drone deliveries through a service called Zipotle, yes really, in Dallas. Nottinghamshire Police in the UK are deploying AI-powered robot dogs with weapon detection capabilities for high-risk situations. In Switzerland, Just Eat Takeaway is testing robot dog food deliveries in Zurich. These robots can climb stairs, navigate obstacles, adapt to weather conditions, and travel at 15 kilometers per hour. The most interesting application might be at Oregon State University, where researchers are testing robot dogs in Mars simulated environments at White Sands National Park. Five-day field trials are teaching these robots to autonomously navigate, map, and make decisions in challenging, unpredictable terrain. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, comment with your thoughts on whether robot delivery is the future or just a gimmick, and subscribe to the channel for more AI and robotics analysis. ChatGPT introduced a project memory feature that allows users to limit the AI's memory access to information relevant only to specific projects. This addresses privacy concerns while improving focus and efficiency. Previously, ChatGPT would remember information across all conversations, which could lead to context bleeding between different projects or personal conversations. Project memory creates isolated contexts, which is particularly valuable for professional use. This seems like a small feature, but it represents a more mature approach to AI privacy and data management. As AI systems become more integrated into professional workflows, this kind of granular control becomes essential. What strikes me most about these developments is how they're converging. Enhanced robotics hardware, real-time AI processing, immersive content creation, and improved data management are coming together to create experiences we couldn't imagine just a few years ago. But the regulatory responses in Illinois and Utah show that society is starting to grapple with the psychological and social implications of these technologies. We're not just dealing with technical capabilities anymore, we're dealing with fundamental questions about human-AI relationships.
The robot shopping mall success in Beijing suggests that some societies are ready to embrace robotics as consumer products rather than industrial tools. But the AI therapy bans suggest other societies are more cautious about the psychological dependencies these technologies can create. The next few years are going to be crucial for determining how AI and robotics integrate into society. The technology is clearly ready. Robot dogs can deliver food, AI can create interactive worlds from imagination, and robotics hardware is becoming genuinely accessible. But the human element remains unpredictable. Will we adapt to AI-enhanced videos without losing appreciation for authentic content? Can we use AI therapy tools responsibly, or do we need strict oversight? Will robot delivery become normal, or will it remain a novelty? What I find most encouraging is that we're finally having serious conversations about limits and regulations alongside discussions about capabilities. The Illinois AI therapy ban might seem restrictive, but it shows that governments are thinking proactively about protecting citizens from potential harms. The Chinese robot mall's success shows there's genuine consumer demand for robotics products when they're priced accessibly. But whether that demand exists in other markets remains to be seen. One thing is certain. The AI and robotics landscape is evolving faster than our social and regulatory frameworks can keep up. The question isn't whether these technologies will transform daily life, but whether we can manage that transformation thoughtfully and responsibly. And honestly, looking at the pace of development versus the speed of regulatory response, I'm not entirely optimistic that we'll get the balance right on the first try. But maybe that's okay. Maybe learning by doing, with appropriate safeguards, is the only way to navigate this technological transformation.